church. Hey, if you're out in the foyer, why don't you come on in? We're gonna worship in this place. So why don't you stand to your feet and sing along with me? Come on, you clap your hands this morning. That's it. Sometimes you gotta dance in the darkness, sing in the fire, praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes you gotta stand down the giant, worship from a lion's den. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that he's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the one. Praise you anywhere, praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest he is worthy is he is worthy of all of the praise. Sometimes you gotta praise in the prison, cry out to heaven. Sometimes you gotta stand on your shackles, brave in the battle, worship with your hands held high. I'll praise you anyway.
our faith. Stir our faith to believe for more. More of you, more of your presence, more of your wisdom, more of your power, Lord Jesus, this morning. We thank you, Lord. This morning, if you have a need, we're going to pray for you and believe with you because there is such a, a, a faith that is stirring here in the room. And you know, so many people have needs at the moment and believing for miracles. So if you do, and you're looking and wanting prayer, can you lift your hands? Because we're going to pray with you. And if you're online and you're watching us and you need prayer, lift your hands as well. There's so many hands that have gone up. We're going to pray and believe for healing today. Healing, back issues to be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer to be gone in Jesus' name. Depression to be gone in Jesus' name. There are so many different situations that are going on. Financial breakthrough in Jesus' name. But you need to call out and say, in Jesus' name, I'm believing for this. It's your faith, my faith, together we can believe for it. So let's just pray over this. Lord Jesus, I pray for every person here in this room that needs healing today. We pray and believe for it in your name, Jesus. We ask you to come and fill us, Lord Jesus, with your power to believe for more, more of you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for cancer to be gone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, for healing of depression, Lord. Jesus, I pray even now for people who are struggling financially, for great blessing over their lives. I pray even this week, let there be miracles. I pray in your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here. Good to, that we can pray. Isn't it good that we can stand here and freely worship our Lord Jesus Christ? Many places can't do that, but we can. And we should be happy that we can and just keep believing for those miracles. Can I encourage you to keep praying for people that need prayer? And you probably know someone who needs prayer. Keep, keep praying for them. But before we take our seats, quickly say hello to one or two people this morning. your first time here at our church this is a great place to be this is family and we love being here in church so hopefully you've met someone new today and if you want to know more about our church and connect in you can go out to our next step counters and have a chat with our team out there as well we have a lot of different programs running so please do that at the end and if you're online you can also um, just type in there and ask for more information as well. You know, we've got lots of highlights, lots of things happening in our church. Saturday 21st, which is next weekend, we have a short seminar and it's the parables of Jesus. And if you want to know more about that, you can go online or you can chat to Nabil. Stand up, Nabil. Just quickly stand up. This is Nabil. He uh, is running this this seminar and if you want to know more the him and the team will be out in the foyer as well it's a, just a, another great uh, way of learning about Jesus and his parables and just don't we always want to be learning never want to sit stale we want to always learn and also on the 1st of November we have our leaders and volunteers celebration so if you are involved in er any area of our church um, whether you're a leader or a volunteer we have this big celebration happening. We do it every year. We give away awards. It's just a time of just thanking everyone who is uh, just a part of what we do. And so we're celebrating. Awards are going to be given out. There's going to be lots of great food. We're doing this at our Chads at the Chadston Hotel, which is over a, wherever Chadston Shopping Centre is. There's the hotel there, and it's a big ballroom. Um, so please register for that. You go online, there'll be a price there. We want you to register. It's just going to be a fun time as well. But um, this week, 
Matt and myself are heading off tomorrow. We're off to Romania for two weeks and we have our team. Jesse's already over there. Uh, Alex and Sarah are going. I think Andrew Groza is going. Mary's going. There's a whole team going over to Romania and uh, there's a few conferences that we're involved in, some churches that uh, we will be speaking at. So can I encourage you over these next two weeks, please pray for us because we need your prayers. We need God's direction. We need just his anointing on us as we step out. Um, But please do remember to pray for us. Also, we have our Generous Heart campaign happening. We launched it last week. That is with our red bags. You would have seen that um, in the foyer. You'll see those bags out there. This is something we do every year and we want to bless as usual. We have a thousand bags to give out to our community. And can I encourage you, please grab one of those bags, fill it with the shopping list that is attached to that bag. Bring it back in as soon as possible. If you can't do that, you can actually just make a donation. Uh, That will be a help as well. So you can see that online as well. Just have a look. This is, we do this. This is my, what I love doing every year. It's just blessing our community. And we do it. And there's a thousand people that we can bless and encourage it. And it's our time of also inviting people to our carol service as well. But can I encourage you, please take it back today. Or if you can't do that, um, just make a donation. But please don't keep those bags in your boot. Don't kidnap them. Because we need you to do the shopping. If you can't do the shopping, please don't take the bag. Just bless us with a monetary donation as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to go back into some worship this morning and um, and then Pastor Matt will get up to share. And I just want to welcome all the families that are here for baby dedications. We'll be having that after uh, Pastor Matt preaches. Welcome to you all. Uh, if it's your first time here, we hope you enjoy the service as well. So let's just stand and then let's continue with a little bit more worship. Calm down, spirit, when you move, you made my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you move it. I'm here and I know you feel me. Calm down, spirit, when you move, you made my heart pound. When you fill the room.
Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're in this place today. And God, we thank you as we come around your word. God, you're going to speak to us. Father, you're going to refresh us. Holy Spirit, you're going to stir our faith. And God, we give you all the praise and all the glory in your wonderful name. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen. What a great sense of God in the house today. Fantastic. Why don't you grab your seats as you turn, as you do, turn the person next to you, give them a big smile. Fantastic. Great to see you in the house of God this morning. Who's excited to be here? Give me a wave. Absolutely fantastic. Well, this is our last Sunday before we minister overseas. We go on long service leave and uh, we're doing two conferences in Romania. One of them is a pastor's conference. We've got 200 churches represented at, in that conference, something that this church has started. You know, there's a whole new wave of next generation leaders that are happening in Eastern Europe. And I just believe that our church is at the forefront of that. Isn't that really cool? Amen. Is that really good? And then after that, Pastor Frank and I are going to be away for a few weeks on long service leave. We've got a great team of people here that are going to be looking after the church. So behave yourself. <laughs> Kidding. So it's going to be great. Really looking forward to it. It's going to be amazing. Just a couple of announcements, uh, a couple of things that uh, I want to mention this morning. And that is from time to time, we do have staff movements. For those of you that have been with us on this journey, we've been, now been senior pastors for 10 years. Uh, this, these are the things that happen. And one of the people that, one of the couples that we've been journeying with about the next season of their life, that is Pastor Mark and Bernie Anderson. And they're going to be stepping off staff to stepping into running their own church. Right now, they're seeking God about different opportunities that are opened up before them. And, uh, you know, we've been journeying this with Mark and Bernie now for a few months now. I remember Mark coming to me saying, you know, kind of feeling this stirring about really this next season for us, about being senior ministers. And Frank and I turned to each other. We said, yeah, we really feel that's the next season uh, for them. And can I just say this? Mark and Bernie have just been such a blessing overall to this house. As you know, that they were our creative pastors for many years, just did an absolutely outstanding job. A lot of things that we're walking in today is because of what they actually sowed into the life of this church, and they are a great blessing. You know, one of the things I've realized about this church, this is an apostolic church. Uh, it, 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 you know, the word, you know, a lot of people talk about apostolic ministry. Well, one of the key understandings of apostolic ministry is that it sends out. Uh, it sends out. You know, you look at when Pastor Allen was leading the church, the amount of ministries that have gone around the globe. There's just something on this house that sends people out. You know, you look at Pastor Phil and Krista doing an outstanding do uh, job uh, in Queensland. Uh, Adrian Deneen, the pastor in Great Church in Frankston. You know, just recently we've sent a number of youth pastors out of this house. Church, it's just part of this house that sends people out. And I celebrate that. I think it's just the anointing that's on this place. And so Pastor Mark and Bernie, in the state of Victoria, we need good, healthy pastors, right? And, you know, being the ACC president, we, trust me, we need good, healthy pastors. And so just having them go out is going to be absolutely amazing. The couple that are going to replace them is going to be Ramon and Bronte. And so Ramon is still going to be oversighting the youth ministry. Uh, and, uh, you know, Ramon just has a huge capacity. And so he's going to continue to do that. As you know, youth ministry is oversighted by Ramon and Bronte. And then we've got uh, three wonderful youth pastors. We've got Ryan Raj and Casey. We've got my son, Samuel Hines. We've got James Morgan. And, and you know, those guys have just literally seen the youth ministry explode. Uh, it's literally doubled in size. Uh, Ramon, you know, when he was at Lindbrook, he literally just saw that youth ministry explode. And there's just something of fruitfulness upon that young man, that young couple, that I just know that God is going to use. Second thing, let me just say this as well. It is a healthy church that is raising the next generation that are coming through the house of God. And uh, I really felt the Lord this, even this year when I was praying, saying sons and daughters have now reached a level of maturity. They are ready to take it on to the next generation. And we are seeing that. And I just think that is absolutely exciting. Uh, I announced it to the Limbrook leaders on Thursday night. Uh, and when I said that, you know, we're going to let you know who's going to be taken over, they all held their breath. And when I said Ramon and Bronte, they all broke out in spontaneous applause. And I thought, well, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. So Limbrook don't know yet. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be preach here. And then from there, I'm going to go announce it at Limbrook. The second thing I just want to uh, make mention as well is that in this, this house, 
God has just has been bringing wonderful people into our church. I don't know if you noticed, but we've had a, a season of significant growth in our church this year. And uh, one of the areas in our church that continually just needs incredible support is the whole area of young families. And, you know, just hearing a baby cry, can I just say this? That's a sign of a healthy church. It's a sign of a healthy church. And so, you know, we've got baby dedications and absolutely wonderful. And so, uh, you know, one of the, uh, Leighton and Ailey, Pastor Leighton and Ailey have just been an incredible blessing. Uh, they continue to do what they do and really also oversighting young families. But one of the things that I've noticed is that God has also brought other credentialed ministers into this place that have got other jobs but want to really volunteer here, support here, bring strength here. And I just think it's an incredible blessing when we have people that are saying, hey, yeah, we've got other jobs, but we really want to sow into the life of this house. And I want to introduce a couple here today that you're going to hear a lot more about that are just going to bring strength and vitality into their young families. And that is uh, Pastor Luke and Sarah Connaughton. Pastor Luke uh, runs sports chaplaincy here in Victoria. And Sarah is a health and well-being coordinator for one of the major schools here in Victoria. And uh, they came here at the beginning of the year and they just really felt to plant themselves here. And they said, hey, we just want to give our volunteer time into the life of the church. So you're going to be seeing a lot more of them around the place and just bringing strength into young families. And I just thought I'd introduce them to you today. So when you get a phone call from them, you don't hang up on them. You actually go, hey, we know who you are. Well, let's give them a great hand. Why don't you come? Thank you, Pastor Matt. Uh, we love this church. We've been here for around uh, nine months now and so uh, enjoying being a part of the church. Such a healthy, strong church, multicultural, multi-generational, um, and we're passionate about young families, uh, seeing young families do well and thrive and marriages that are healthy and kids grow uh, to make their own decision to follow Jesus. So yeah, we're looking forward to coming, um, supporting Pastor Leighton and the team and, and uh, yeah, getting to know all of you better. So we have three young kids, Harper, Summer and Jack, and we so resonate with the idea that church is family. And so we just really look forward to getting to know you more and more and serving you where, where we can. I am a lover of babies, so hand me babies at any time in the service when you've had a sleepless night and I will absolutely love it. But we want to be here to support you and love on you guys as this church has become our family. We love it. Um, and so, yeah. And if you let uh, her hold your baby, she'll stop asking me for more babies. That would help me out big time. Three's enough. Absolutely fantastic. All right, Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 5. We have changed our service around a little bit this morning because once I've finished preaching here, I'm going to go to Limbrook and have a conversation with them. I've titled my message this morning, Trust in the Famine. Trust in the Famine. You know, church, we often talk about the great things of, that God is doing, but we often don't talk about the famine seasons in our lives. And what I love about the Word of God is that it not only speaks about the mountaintop experiences and it speaks about the fruitful moments, but it also speaks about famine seasons as well. And there's this wonderful idea in Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 5, about what God asks Isaac to do in the famine. And we're going to read it this morning. It says, now there was a famine in the land besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Jerea. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while and I will be with you and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all of these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all of these lands and through your offspring all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees and my instructions. What I find interesting is that they're in a, in a famine and God tells him to stay in the place of famine. I mean, think about that. Why would God ask Isaac, his servant, to stay in a place of difficulty, to stay in a place of dryness and hardness? 
I mean, we all go through famines in our lives and often our first response is, something's wrong, something's broken, we gotta get out of here, we don't like what's going on. But God says to Isaac, don't go to Egypt, but stay in the place of famine. It is interesting that the Bible talks about a previous famine. It says beside the previous famine in Abraham's time. So in other words, God is comparing this, so the Bible is comparing this to a previous famine. He's comparing it to another big one. You know, when we think about weather events, we often do compare them to historical weather events. Sometimes when I drive uh, through country Victoria and you'll go through a, a valley in the road, you will see a measuring stick and it kind of shows you where the previous floods have been. We often compare things of the past to the things that we're going through now. In a few, we, uh, actually tomorrow we're going to go to Romania. And I know talking to some of the Romanians, back in the old day, they, you know, they talk about having to trudge through a metre of snow through the harsh winters. And so there's this idea here that this is not a small famine, but this is a big famine. And the temptation was for Isaac to get out of the place of famine. The temptation was to go to Egypt. It's easy to go to Egypt just to get out, to take the pressure off, to find a place of nourishment again. And this is really what God is saying to Isaac. Don't go for the quick fix. Don't get out of the famine and go to Egypt. Don't be tempted to go because in the famine, I want to do something in your life. We celebrate the mountaintops and the years of fruitfulness, but we never look at the famine in that way. We all go through famine seasons in our lives. Moments where things aren't working out. Seasons where it's dry, where it's difficult to reign. The Bible says of Elizabeth and Zechariah that before they had John the Baptist, that they were faithful in the temple and yet she was barren. I mean, how does that even be possible? To be faithful to the Lord, to be obedient, to do all the things that God had asked them to do and yet be barren. I think if we were to look at famine seasons in our lives in a small snapshot, we would miss the bigger picture of what the Holy Spirit is wanting to do. We often go through financial famines, things that we struggle through. You think about all the different famines that you and I experience in life. We go through relationship famines what, where people that we have sown into are not responding back in kind. What about a famine of opportunity? Maybe you're in this place today and just opportunity is just not opening up. There, there's a famine of opportunity. What about a famine of productivity? No matter how hard you work, no matter how difficult it is, you can't seem to be making progress. What I find interesting in the Bible is that famines occur more than once. They are not a regular occurrence, but they are an occurrence. I did a quick search and I saw 14 famines in the Bible. Now, maybe there were more, but these were the 14. 14 occurrences where significant events took place around a famine. Either things that have caused a famine or moments where God was using a famine to bring about his purpose and his plan. When we read some of these famines in the Old Testament, church, we always see there's a story around a famine. God is doing something. Either he's teaching his people or he's leading his people and creating a new narrative of his faithfulness and of his kindness. And whether the famine is a chance weather event or something orchestrated by God, either way, God was doing something in the famine. I guess my challenge for us today, this morning, is very simply, you know, we can have two ideas when it comes to famines in our lives. We can either allow the famine to use us, to drain us, to discourage us, to harden us, or we can allow God to use the famine to build us, to increase us, to build a sense of resilience and confidence in us. God has an amazing ability to use famines for his purpose and for his will. It was in the famine that Joseph was presented before Pharaoh, became one of the key leaders in the land. It was in the famine that Ruth followed Naomi to Bethlehem, where she met her future husband and the wonderful story 
was birthed. It was in the famine that Elijah confronted the prophets of Baal and brought a spiritual alignment back to wayward Israel. I think we have to get away from this notion when things are not going well that God is not in it or something is broken. We are so outward focused. We are so driven by what we think we need that we immediately think we're not in the plan of God or the enemy is winning and we are so quick to get out. We're so quick to go to Egypt just to bring some respite and some comfort. But I want to encourage you this morning with this statement. God is in all of our seasons and whether they are productive seasons or whether they are famine seasons, God will have his way in our life if we just trust him. So we understand that God uses famines. We understand that famines do not take God by surprise. But how should we deal with famines? How should we position ourselves in a famine? There's a couple of points here. The first one's fairly quick. Is that we've got to treat famines as seasons because that's exactly what they are. The enemy will come to us and say, well, that is a permanent season in your life. No, famine is just a season. It will come and it will go. And I think the point here that God is making to Isaac, he's saying, don't make a permanent decision based on a temporary season. Be wise in what God is doing in your life. You know, there's often a phrase that is used in a season of famine, and it goes something like this, after the famine, or once the famine has finished. The second idea here that I see out of this passage, we kind of see it right throughout the Word of God, is that just don't allow the famine in the land to produce a famine of the heart. That there may be a famine on the outside, but just don't allow that famine to come in and to destroy your relationship with God and to harden your heart. You know, there are some people that I meet that when they go through a famine, it actually produces the worst out of them. Someone once said, the only way that you'll know what is in a bucket is if you kick it. It is so true. When we are kicked, we find out what's inside of ourselves. And I just think when we're walking through a famine, it's so important not to allow the outside environment to come and to destroy the softness of the Holy Spirit in our lives. You know, the Bible speaks about in Amos chapter 8 about a famine that is not on the outside, but a famine that is on the inside. Amos chapter 8 verse 11 to 12 says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine for bread or thirst for water, but rather a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea and wander from the north to the east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. The reality is, is that Israel walked away from God and the reality is they had a hard heart towards God and so it wasn't a famine on the outside, but it was a, a famine on the inside. I began to think about that when it comes to famines in our lives. You know, the Bible often speaks about the ways that we should respond to God. And uh, when I begin to list these things down, you'd say, yeah, we, we, I've heard you preach on that on, and on that, but there's one aspect that we'd often, often preach about. I mean, we preach about trusting in God, right? Who knows that's important, trusting in God. We talk about being obedient to God, right? That's an important. Uh, we talk about just having a prayerful life towards God. We talk about listening to God. We talk about responding in faith to the Lord. And we often preach about our responses to what God does in our lives. But there's one response that we don't often talk about. And it's found in Psalm 37, verse 1 to 7. It says, Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass they will soon wither, and like green plants they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord. There's one of the responses we often see in the Word of God. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Pasture. Verse 4, take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. It's another thing we often talk about. Trust in Him, and He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication, like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord. Again, it's another thing we often hear about. And wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when, evil, when people succeed in their ways, 
when they carry out their evil schemes. But church, I want you to notice in verse 4, the Bible says, take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. We never talk about delighting in the Lord. We never talk about being in that place of revelation and understanding that God is the greatest source of our joy, that God is the greatest source of our contentment, that God God is the greatest source of personal fulfillment. And, And I just think this is so powerful that when you and I, we go through a famine, this one idea that frees us in a time of famine. You know, when you and I, when we think about famines, We often, in today's 21st century and in the Western world, we often relate famines to material things, material outcomes, material possessions, material results. But what happens when we are in the season when there are no material outcomes? When God strips away our material possessions or we don't have any material results? What is our emotional, what is our faith position in those moments? I think it is the real test to see where we get our delight from. Come on, do you understand what I'm saying this morning? Our delight for the Lord must be greater than any other delight in our life. When we become sloppy in that, when we seem to allow other things to fulfill that fulfillment of our delight in the Lord, We become a slave to those things. We are driven by those things. Can I ask you this today, very simply? Is your walk with God enough for you? That if God were to take everything else away, is your walk with the Holy Spirit, your delight in Him, the way that He pours His love and His kindness into your soul? Yes, He is enough, praise God. He is greater than anything that we can achieve in our own strength. Nothing should replace the Lord. It's so freeing. You know, the word delight here means to be soft and pliable. What keeps us us from being hard in the desert is to engage in our delight in the Lord. Many years ago, I was praying. I still pray, by the way. I was going through a difficult season. I was going through a difficult season. And doing all the right things, being faithful, nothing was working. So I'm going, I'm being faithful, I'm being obedient, and nothing is working. And I started to allow the famine that I was going through on the outside to actually become a famine of the heart. Going, what the heck is going on? I'm being obedient to the word. I'm not seeing the fruit. I'm not seeing the breakthrough. I was actually looking for opportunity. I was saying, God, I want you to begin to open doors. And no doors were opening up. And so I was praying and you know, people gathered around me or praying together. And I've, every morning I get up and I just pray, God, give breakthrough. But as I was praying, part of me was just getting really annoyed at God. And I was saying, God, what is going on? How can I be faithful? Nothing is working. And as a result of that, I, the, rather than the peace of God coming over me, I was getting more and more frustrated. I mean, this was going on for about two or three weeks. And I was getting more frustrated and more angry and more annoyed. But one morning... One morning as I was praying, God gave me a vision. Now, I know it was a vision from God because I could have never, ever conjured that up myself. I was praying in my own head. Come on, who knows at times when you go through a hard times, you are in your own head. And I'm thinking, I'm getting annoyed, I'm getting frustrated. And as I was praying, the words were coming out, but I wasn't really thinking about what I was praying. Instantly, God gave me a vision. And I saw a vision of me dancing in front of the throne room of God. Now, I know that that was a vision from God. I know you and I, we often picture ourselves in certain circumstances. So I'll picture myself doing certain things and leading and doing this and going to the gym and pumping out 200 kilos. I have all these types of visions, right? But I can assure you here this morning, I would never ever in my own mind conjure myself up of actually dancing. But I saw myself I'm not even going to try and imitate it. (laughs) I was twirling. I was actually twirling before the Lord. And I was doing a pretty good job of it. I was twirling. 
And I was laughing. And I'm going, that is the weirdest thing. And I felt the Holy Spirit so clearly say to me, he says, I just want you to delight yourself in me. I just want you to, just want you to love on me. Stop thinking those material breakthroughs are the key to your success. Right, you've allowed those things to become idols in your life. Idols of opportunity. Idols of desire. Just put them all aside and just worship and enjoy me and enjoy my presence and just be under my anointing. And if it's just me and you, that's all that matters. And I thought it was such a powerful picture. And it's an encouragement to you and I this morning that in the place of famine, God wants us to delight in Him. God wants us to enjoy His presence that He paid the ultimate price for. The second idea is this. It's very simple and you've got to have a confidence that no matter what famine you go through, God has anointed you to be fruitful. God has anointed you to be productive. Let me stir your faith this morning. I want the musicians to come. Psalm 37, verse 18 to 19 says, The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither, and in the days of famine, they will have enjoy plenty. Look what it says in Genesis chapter 26, further down. Well, at the same passage, it says, The Lord appeared to Isaac and says, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. See, the many people in life, when they go through a famine, they pull the pin. They look for the next opportunity or for the next season. They're always chasing things rather than being confident that where they are now, God is saying, Stay where you are, because I'm going to bless you in this land. Look, it says in Genesis chapter 26, just a few uh, scriptures further on in verse 12 to 14. It says, Isaac planted crops in that land. Not in a different land, but in that land. And the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. Isaac planted crops in that land. In that same land. In that same land where everyone wanted to get out of. In that same land that people said, there's a famine here. It's useless. It's no good. In that same land where they said, Egypt looked better. In that exactly the same land, God blessed Isaac and made him incredibly fruitful. Because it's not about the land. It's not about the circumstances. It's about the hand of God upon your life and upon your family. And this disposition, this disposition that God is with me, one of the opportunities that I love to have is to stir young ministers. And sometimes there's, there's different things that take place, I think, in all movements, where young ministers are looking for the right opportunity, the right season, the right moment. And I go, you got it all backwards. If God has anointed you, you can be fruitful in any land that God places you. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter what you face. If you are confident and you are anointed, God will make things grow out of your life. Can you believe today you are in the same land and maybe that land, there's a famine and it's hard and it's broken and the weather patterns are not in your favour. I feel the anointing of God this morning. Can you believe in that famine that God has anointed you to be fruitful? And like Isaac, that same land, hallelujah, that same land will be a land of blessing and will be a land of breakthrough. You've got to have that confidence in your soul. I'm not saying I'm perfect. It took me a number of years to get there. Years ago, I talked to Pastor Alan. We we're doing some ministry overseas, and he said, "You got to be confident in the call of God. That when you don't have the lights, you don't have the worship, you don't have what you hear. 
God can stick you anywhere, anywhere, the, anywhere around the world. He can move in the Holy Spirit. He can see souls saved. But it's not about the land. That was a revelation to me. We are portable church. Take a Christian anywhere, stick him anywhere in the world and they're gonna be fruitful for the kingdom of God. Put him anywhere, put him in the hardest place on earth. And if they've got a strong relationship with God, they are gonna change society and change their generation. See, the world says, and I understand there's always an element of truth to this. Change society and the man will change. But God says, change the man and he'll change society. Change begins with us. Can you believe that God will bring fruitfulness in your life no matter where he places you? I want to stir your faith for that this morning. Amen. I want you to stand to your feet today. I want to pray for people this morning. We have a pastoral team here. We're going to sing this song, but I just believe today that God just wants to stir faith for fruitfulness this morning. And maybe today you've just lost that intimacy with the Lord. Maybe today God is saying to you today, come on, just get your priorities right. I want you to delight in me. <laughs> Don't allow your delight for things to override your delight for me. I pray for you this morning. I also want to really pray for people today that God wants to give you faith for fruitfulness. God wants to give you faith for effectiveness. That the land that you're in right now, it's dry, it's hard, it's weary, it's difficult, but it doesn't matter. God has anointed you to be fruitful. God has anointed you to be effective. And today, if you say in this next season of my life, God, I just want to be effective. I want to be fruitful. God, I just want prayer this morning. I want you to put something on my life today. I want you to stir my faith today. That as we worship God, I want you to come stand here. We're going to pray for you this morning. I believe for many people, it's a line in the sand today. It's been a hard year. It's been difficult. There's been challenges. But God today is reaffirming His anointing and His power and His presence that is upon your life today. And today, if you want prayer in this area, as we sing, I want you to come. We're going to pray for you this morning. Come on, why don't you come? Praise you again and again. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't you come? Because all that I have is a hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands this morning. Pastors, I want you to come. Come on, let's begin to pray.
spoke to each one of us, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, you want to bless us with rivers of living water right through our lives, Lord Jesus, that where there's famine, Lord Jesus, that you will bring great blessing, Lord, I pray, over every person in this room this morning, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are leading us and taking us through whatever it is we're going through, but Lord, you're our source. You're everything, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 That was a great message. Wasn't that an awesome message? Yeah. Matt's just gone off to Lynbrook now, but I want you to take your seats and we're going to invite all the families that are getting their children dedicated up onto the stage. There's five families that we want to invite up here. How good. Now, wherever you are, you're ready to come. Where are they? Oh, maybe as you're doing this, maybe I'll go do the offering and the families can all come up on the stage. As you know, we every week we always give back to our Lord Jesus Christ and that's through our tithes and our offerings. And uh, it's just a joy and a blessing that we can always give back. You know, I, for me... We always tithe. We always have offerings that we give back to this house. And, you know, as a house here, we don't store everything up and keep it for ourselves. We always want to give back out to our community. As, you know, before I spoke about We Care, that's one of our areas that we give back to. You know, on Friday night, we had a new initiative that we started, which is called Faith Collective, where we had all the 30 pluses come out and just there was like 55 young people there and again it's giving back out in every department of the church because we want to see health growing in this place we want to see families come into this place and be blessed but it's through the work that we do in the departments across our connect groups everywhere in this church and it's through our giving and I just want to say a big thank you to you that you give back and you see that this is a healthy place to give into and if you're planted here, this is your home, then always give back to this house. Give back in your tithes and your offerings. And I want you to hold that in your hand. And as you know, there's many ways that we can give, but I want you to hold that and we're going to pray. Lord Jesus, you see that, Lord, what we have in our hand is only always to give back out. We never want to hold it and store it up for ourselves, but we want to give back to you continually. And we thank you for great blessing in your name. The containers are just at the end. You can pass them on through. And also tonight, we have our revival service at 5.30. Um, it's a great service uh, for all, all of us. Pastor Matt will be preaching tonight as well. And it will be an anointing service. And he wants to prophesy over people. And just it's just going to be a great impartation. It's also an... Just in case you didn't know, it is we do run our young um, our kids program as well, and what we do is we feed your kids with a meal, so you don't have to feed them at the end. You can take them home from our service, and they can you can put them straight to bed if you want. So that is just one of the areas that we always want to be uh, looking after our kids and our young families as well. Okay, look at all these beautiful families up here. Aren't they beautiful? Five beautiful families up here. Great. Maybe come a little bit forward. I feel like you're so far away from me. I do like people being close. Okay. Hello, beautiful. Look at her. She's so cute. They're all beautiful kids. Look, healthy church. All new babies as well. You know, we grow through people coming through our doors, but we also grow through all the beautiful kids that are born in our church. And again, this is just a time of dedication. And I know that Pastor Layton has spoken to most of you about what you're doing uh, today. It's dedicating these great kids to the Lord Jesus um, because it is not up to each one of us. It is up to, uh, like for me, when I had my three kids, each one I dedicated and each one now are walking in their own dreams and destinies. I had dreams for my kids, but the Lord has better dreams. He has more dreams and they're better than my dreams because mine are not as good as what his are and his are 
to just have your kids in this house serving and loving on Him. It's not about you and me. It's I think my kids, I want them to have a relationship with God. And can I encourage you, as parents, be great examples to your children. That's the best place. This is the place where they learn is at home. And they learn from you. And if you're doing things that aren't right, they will learn that. If you are doing things in the will of God, they will learn that. And that's what you want them to learn. They want, you want them to learn the good things, the great things in your home. Make it a house of love. Make it a house that the kids know that they are loved, they are nurtured, and they walk closely with you and with the Lord. So we're going to pray. But before we do that, I'm going to get uh, each each pastor just to introduce these beautiful families. Good morning, church. Today here we have Nicholas and Naluka with sweet sleeping baby Hepzibah. I've got my friends Ian and Ruth here and Ava is also sleeping. Ava's beautiful. And in the middle here we have Paloma and Alpha and beautiful Alicia. Hi church, we've got James and Mercy here dedicating baby Henry. And I'm with Donovan and Rochelle and Adele and we are dedicating Giselle this morning. Why don't we stand? Because this is actually an important time in the church. And I want us to reach out our hands and I want us to pray over every family here. And as pastors here, I want you to lay hands on these families as well. Lord Jesus, you see every family here. Lord, and I just pray great blessing over them. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, as we dedicate these beautiful children to you, that they will walk and follow you, Lord Jesus, in everything that they do. And even today, Lord, I pray that you will plant a seed into their spirits right now. Jesus, I pray that they will never sway away from you, Lord, but they will stay closely with you, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, be upon these families. Lord, I pray in these homes, let there be great blessing, great love, Lord, I pray for wisdom over the parents today, Lord. I pray we need wisdom as parents and we need your guidance, Lord. And I pray that, Lord, you will give that to each family here, Lord. But I just pray most of all that, Lord, every family here puts you at the centre of everything. And we just pray blessing over every child here this morning. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's great. I think now have we got Bibles here to give out? This is the best place to start. Can I encourage you to read the Word over your children? Um, From a young age when my kids, as I said, were little, I would sit and do devotions with them at night from my firstborn right through to the third one. I would sit at night, whether they understood it or not, at the age of six months to a year, I'd just sit and just hold them and read just different parts of the Bible to them and to teach them. So can I encourage you, do that every day or weekly, whatever you can do to get the Word into your kids as well. But thank you. You're all beautiful. I love you. So you can take your seats. She's the best. <laughs> Look at her. She's so cute. But that's it. That's it for church today. Why don't you grab a coffee, take someone out for lunch if you want to. Enjoy your day and see you tonight.
Hi Church, my name's Katrina. I'm the Executive Pastor here at Faith and we are so glad that you could join us this weekend. This is a great church and we have lots of great ministries for you to be involved in and a great community for you to be a part of. We have men's and women's ministry, great program for our youth and kids. And we encourage you, if you'd like to speak to any of our team to know a bit more about our church, please just come and speak to one of our friendly team at the end of the service.